Let's practice naming some ternary ionic compounds. Ternary means it has a polyatomic ion in it, so you're going to need a periodic table and that polyatomic ion handout. Feel free to pause the video as we go along so that you can try to name each before we do. In number one, we know all of these have polyatomic ions, but you could also tell because there's more than two types of elements. It's important that you find the part that's a polyatomic ion first so that you know how to do your naming. In this first one, if you look at your polyatomic ion handout, you probably see this on there. So Na is sodium, and sodium is not in the D block, and it's not one of our exceptions, so it's just sodium. The polyatomic ion we just name exactly like the name on your handout, and NO3 is nitrate. So this compound is sodium nitrate. The next one, we know there's a polyatomic ion, we look at our handout and we see PO4. So it's aluminum, phosphate. And you might notice that these names are pretty similar to um, if it was just phosphorus, because that would be aluminum phosphide. So you have to be really careful when you look at these names, because there's phosphate, there's phosphide, and there's phosphite. Look at this next one. There are four different kinds of compounds, so there are actually two polyatomic ions in this one, NH4 and SO4. One giveaway, if there's parentheses around it, it's a polyatomic ion. So we can look at our sheet and see that that is ammonium. And SO4 is sulfate. And this next one, we can see that phosphate again. So this one is sodium phosphate. And here, Cu is a D block metal, so we have to figure out the charge. So first, let's say we know that it's copper something sulfate. And if we look at our polyatomic ion handout, we can see that sulfate has a negative 2 charge. And we have overall negative 2, not negative 8. There aren't four sulfates, there are four oxygens in one sulfate. So our copper, in order to balance the charge, has to be plus two. And this one is lithium sulfite. Let's practice writing formulas for ternary compounds. So when we're writing formulas for ternary ionic compounds, we use the exact same rules. We do drop and swap. So we start by writing our ions. Cobalt is CO, and I tell you that it's 4, and sulfate. This is how we know that it's a polyatomic ion. Remember, if it's an element, it always is going to end in "-ide." So if it says H or ite, then you know it's a polyatomic ion. When we look at our polyatomic ion handout, we should see that sulfate is SO4 minus 2. So we drop the positive and negative and swap the numbers. Remember that you cannot change the subscript, so we have to put it in parentheses to protect it. So CO2 in parentheses, SO4, and outside we put the 4. So this means there are 4 SO4s. Now that one can be reduced to give us CO, SO4, 2. Next we have sodium phosphate. See the ATE that tells you this is a polyatomic ion. Sodium is plus 1. 
phosphate is PO4 minus 3. So we drop positive and negative, swap the charges. We have Na3, and if it's a 1 going to our polyatomic ion, we don't put parentheses. It's actually incorrect if you put it around it and don't need it. Beryllium nitrate is B E plus 2, and nitrate is NO3 minus 1. Drop the positive and negatives, swap the charges, we get BE, and then we have to put parentheses in O, 3, 2. Next is ammonium cyanide. Now here, this ends in IDE, but cyanide is not one of our elements. So we know that we should look at the polyatomic ions. And ammonium is the only polyatomic ion that's positive, so it's the only one that can be first. So this is two polyatomic ions. NH4 plus one and cyanide minus one. So when we drop and swap, we just get NH4CN. Last, we have nickel 4 chromate. Nickel, and I tell you that it's plus 4, and chromate is CrO4 minus 2. So we drop and swap, and we get an I2, and we've got to put our parentheses, CrO4. Four. And hopefully you see that you have to reduce this to get Ni Cr O4 2. So the rules aren't any different except for in regards to the parentheses.